All right. So the the beginning process or the starting process on the P2P side is is definitely to create a vendor, right? So uh, yes. before you can process any of your transaction, there should be a master record against which you can do your transactions. And that is your vendor record. So how to access a vendor record in NetSuite? You can go in list, relationships, and here you have your vendors. If I click on vendors. And on this page, you can see all the vendors that have been created in your NetSuite account. So it may take a couple of seconds to load. Okay, so here it is. So these are all the vendors uh, that are created on this account. So perhaps this is around 752. Again, on this page, I have the ability to export this into Excel or CSV if I need to do some analysis on my Excel sheet. So, you know, you can find all your relevant vendors. And if you want to create a new vendor, you simply click on new vendor. And this is going to open up the standard vendor form for us. And this is where uh, we are going to enter all the descriptions and information uh, for our vendor record. Now, just a quick disclaimer on this form, you will see some, uh, you know, a lot of custom fields or additional fields. I'll not go into all those details because, you know, this is not standard. So I'll be focusing on all the standard and mandatory fields that you should be aware of. So yes. starting from yeah, so starting from type. So if this vendor is is a company or registered company, you can select the type as company. Or if this is an individual that you are working with, perhaps you know a consultant or some some you know trainer or any individual person doing a business, you can select individual. When you select individual, you will notice that you need to give the name of that individual. And when you select company, you will notice that you need to give a company name. So that's that's a quick difference between a company and an individual type. So let's say for the sake of demo, we are creating a company called, uh, let's say, Adda INC vendor. So this is my vendor that I'm trying to create. Okay, so I'm, I'm a little bit into uh, Bitcoins and all those cryptos. I use them as my examples here. So, but anyway, yes, you can just give any any name over here. Uh, you can select the category, like, you know, if this is a, a consultant, a contract manufacturer, a electronic equipment, uh, or, you know, whatever. So you can categorize your vendors by all these categories as well. Like if it's a service uh, company or, you know, professional equipment, whatever. So let's say this is a service provider, so I'm going to select sub-services. I can give any comments, like let's say this is a new vendor a new service vendor okay you can just capture any comments here you can give email address phone number alternate phone number all these details as well on this uh, page this is the email address that will be used to send out any pdf forms from netsuite to this vendor so you know you can just capture any relevant email address over here uh, for your email communication and then uh, the most important one is the primary subsidiary. So this is where you will select the subsidiary for which this vendor applies to. So let's say if you're working in a one world account where you have multiple subsidiaries, you need to select the subsidiary, uh, which is going to be the primary subsidiary for this vendor. So let's say, you know, GTS Corp is, is, is the company for which we are trying to create this vendor. Okay. Now these are all custom fields, so I'm just gonna quickly enter a few things and just skip that out. Okay, uh, all right. And then we have this financial tab over here. Now this is the very uh, most important tab in this uh, vendor master record. So here you can select your default payables account. Now this is the account that will be used for GL uh, purposes once you record a bill. So this is the payable account that will be used and we will see that in, in you know a, a few minutes when we create a vendor bill from where the payables account is derived. So this is where you can select your default payables account. You can select your primary currency for this vendor. So you know based uh, on your uh, 
subsidiary currency. Uh, so here we have GTS Corp. So the base currency of GTS Corp is USD. So it is automatically populated. However, if you're working with this vendor in a different currency, so let's say you are based in US, uh, but your uh, your vendor is based in China, and you need to do your transactions in uh, in you know Chinese yen. So you can change the currency to yen or or perhaps any other currency. So let's say if uh, if the vendor is based in India and we do transactions with uh, them in INR, so my primary currency for this vendor could also be INR. Okay. So whatever you know your terms are with this vendor, whatever currency that you will use for your transactions, you can select the currency over here. So for the sake of demo, I'm just gonna keep it USD. You can select your terms. So whatever terms you have with this vendor, uh, your payment terms, you can select that, net 15, net 30, net 90. You know, these are the terms that you will establish with this vendor. And once you do that, you can select them over here. You can select your credit limit with this vendor. So let's say, you know, if, if this vendor gives you certain credit limit, uh, maybe, you know, $50,000. Uh, if at any point in time, you can have a credit of 50,000. Uh, once you reach that limit, you cannot order anything to this vendor, something like that. So you can capture your credit limits uh, in next week against this vendor. Okay, you can capture the text ID of this uh, vendor. Uh, if this is, uh, uh, you know, a US based uh, vendor, and if you want to capture 1099, you can also mark that as 1099 over here. So this is more of a concept on the US side, and you know, this checkbox applies to, to the US vendors. Uh, and if there is any withholding tax that you need to capture on this uh, vendor, and this is more of a scenario in India, right? So if there is any withholding tax you need to capture, you can do that. This is not, not a concept in US and Canada, but perhaps on different countries uh, other than US and Canada. Okay, and then uh, here you will notice I can add more currencies. So at the top, I have my currency as USD. But let's say sometimes I work with this vendor in another currency, let's say Euro. I can work with this uh, vendor in Euro as well. I can work with them in Canadian dollar as well. So based on the situation and scenario with this vendor, you can add multiple currencies as well. So at the time of creating a transaction, you can change the currency to the currencies that have been set over here. So this is also something that you can capture on the vendor record. Okay, and then we have the subsidiary tab over here. So notice that uh, we selected a primary uh, subsidiary at the top here, which is GDS Corp. Now let's say you're, you're a group of companies and the same vendor is also you know, uh, giving services to different uh, companies in your group. So in that case, you don't really need to create this vendor again and again in your NetSuite account as a duplicate, uh, but perhaps what you can do is give the access to other subsidiaries as well. So GTS Corp is there by default, but let's say you know this uh, vendor also gives services to my ANZ subsidiary. So I can select ANZ as well. And I can also select, let's say Australia. So now these three subsidiaries can do transactions with this vendor in NetSuite. So you know this, this eliminates the concept of creating duplicate cus customers or vendors in NetSuite because you are sharing the vendors now in on multiple subsidiaries. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. All right. So yeah, this is this is again, you know, a, a very new feature. I would say it was not there in in the beginning stages of NetSuite, but now they have uh, you know introduced this concept of sharing vendors. So this eliminates the 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 requirement to create duplication and duplicate vendors in your NetSuite account. Okay. And then in the relations tab, uh, relationship tab, you can also create any contact information. So let's say for this company at the INC vendor, there, there might be some contact person or contact information that you need to capture. Let's say Mr. XYZ. Job title is sales manager. You can capture their email address, phone, and subsidiary. So DTS Corp. And you can add this. So now on the vendor record, you also have the capability to add your contact information. So at any point in time, if you need to capture the details and directly want to, uh, you know, uh, coordinate or communicate with this Mr. XYZ, you can have all that information over here. 
And finally, the most important one uh, would be the shipping address and the billing addresses. So here in the address tab, you can select the address for this vendor. So, you know, you can capture the address line one, two, city, state, zip code, and save that. So this is the address that can be used uh, to, you know, make out payments or send out any uh, details to this vendor. And uh, maybe uh, on your default PDF terms, you can have all these information as well. So, you know, you can capture your vendor addresses as well on, on the vendor record. All right. So once you have entered all this information, you know, the, these are all the important information that you should be aware of and all the important fields. And once you have captured that, you can simply save the record. Yes. All right. Okay. So now you can see that this vendor is now saved, and uh, which means that I can now use this vendor on my next transactions or anything that I create within NetSuite.